Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create this cover page in Word. So let's open a new document and the first thing we're going to do is to insert all of the text and for this we use text boxes. So go to insert text box, click on the drop down, select draw text box and just simply click and draw out the text box. Then just insert your text and then we'll adjust this text by selecting it, going to home, changing the font if we need to. I'm going to select Helivector. I'm going to make it bold. I'm also going to change the color here. Click on the drop down and I'm going to select this color here. And then I'm simply going to go to this icon here to increase the size of my font until I'm happy. So I'm actually going to take this to 60 and press enter. Just adjust the box by putting out the boxes and then we'll place it round about here. When we insert a text box, you can see we've got this black border, but we've also got a white background inside here. So I want to get rid of both of those. So select it, go to shape format, go to this icon here, which is the borders, click on the drop down and select no outline. And here with this fill, just click on the drop down and select no fill. Then when I deselect it, you can see that's all gone. So once I've done that, I'm just going to utilize this customization by copy and pasting it. The easiest way to do that is to select it, hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag, and then select the text in this box here. And we're just going to put in additional text. Again, select the text, and we're just going to go to the Home tab, and we're going to reduce this down to 18. Readjust the box, and we're just going to take off the bold and once again, we're going to select it, hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag, and then add in additional text. And then for this one, we will actually make it bold, deselect it, and then reselect and move it. And the reason I deselected it is because my cursor is still inside. And once my cursor is inside, I cannot move it. So I have to deselect it and then reselect it. Now align these two together, select it, hold down the or command or control key, select the top one, go to shape format, go to align and select align to left. Once you've done that, go to group and select group. This is all now one group. So now we can simply copy and paste this, hold down the alt or option key, click and drag. And I'm just going to move this all down a little bit. Deselect and reselect this top one. Then ungroup this bottom one so that we can make some adjustments. So click inside here for the cursor and then just delete this and readjust this text and do the same for the bottom one. Click with the cursor inside, select all the text and then type the relevant name. And then I'm going to copy and paste it down here, round about there. Let's just go back and group this together again. It just makes it easy when you group them together because then they don't start moving around. And I'm going to make three copies of this. You can make as many copies as you need, but this is just for the email addresses and your contact information. Okay, once again, we're going to select all of these. Now, if these are too far apart, just select the bottom or top one, doesn't matter. Move it a little bit closer, then select all three. Go to align and then you can use this distribute vertically icon here. And if you click on that, it will space them out equally between the top and the bottom one. Then go to align, align to left. That means it'll all be aligned up here. And then go to group and select group. And there you have your group. Once again, we're just going to quickly borrow one of these. So ungroup it and then simply click and drag to the top. Let's just group that again. Go to group. We're going to put the icons in in a bit. We'll do that with all the other graphics. Select this box here and this is where your company name or company logo will go. Just going to adjust the font size. Take this to 24. And once again, we'll make this one bold. So now we're just going to put the date in, but we're going to use a slightly different method for the text here. We're going to go to insert and we're going to use word art. And we're just going to select this basic word art here. 
and then in here whilst it's selected just type in your date 2024 and then we'll just quickly move that down and then we're going to select it go to the home tab and we're going to adjust the size we're going to select this icon which is aligned to the left so we can align it all up to the left here we're just going to make some simple adjustments to here so we go to shape format and here we're going to go to the text fill and select no fill we're going to go to the text outline and select that blue color then we're going to go to the outline again we're going to go to weight and we're going to select three and then we're going to go to the home tab and then we're just going to select this icon which is increase font size and we're also going to change the font to heli vector and then we're also going to take off the shadow so go to shape format go to this icon here go to shadow and select no shadow because that will come with a shadow and then once we're happy with everything in here make sure it's exactly where you want it you can move things around if you want to readjust once you're happy we're going to select all of these boxes hold down the command or control key select everything go to align align to left and that will align everything up perfectly to the left of course you can do it by eye if you want to it's completely up to you so now we're going to put in a few graphics so i'm going to go to insert shapes click on the drop down i'm going to select the box then i'm just going to click and drag out a little box here Again, once you're on shape format, if you can't see shape format is because you haven't selected the box. Go to shape fill. I'm going to select this color again, outline, no outline. And then I can move this box wherever I like. Just align it to the rest. And I might make some adjustments with my arrow keys just to give those a bit more space. And you'll find you'll be doing this for most of the project just to make sure you're you keep aligning it to exactly where you want it. Once you've done that, we're going to insert some icons. So go to insert, icons. Over here you have a search bar. So I'm just gonna type in globe and this is for my internet. So I'm gonna select this one, click insert. You can see it's been inserted at the top here. Whilst it's selected, I'm gonna to go to graphics fill, click on the drop down, and select that color. Then I'm going to move it to the bottom. Now if this happens, which it regularly does, just press Command or Control Z to go back. Now you might find that you struggle to select the globe underneath. If you do, just select anything on the page, go to Shape Format and go to this icon here, so Selection Pane. This gives you a list of everything you've inserted into your document, which makes it a lot easier to select what you want. If you can't find it, you just use these little icons to the side here, click on and off them, and it'll show you what you need to select. So you can see I've got a graphic here at the bottom, so I can just select it now. Now once you've selected it, go to Graphics Format, go to Wrap Text and select In Front of Text. This now will allow you to move that graphic. If you don't do that step, you won't be able to move it. Once it's at the bottom here, I'm going to go across to the height, make sure it's checked so it keeps its ratio. And I'm going to press one centimeter and press enter, and that will reduce the size. Now I'm gonna leave that as it is at the moment because I'm going to insert the other ones and then we'll have to come back and align them all. So go back over to stock images. Then I'm gonna type in location use this icon here, click insert. Again, because the color is already selected on here, I'm just going to click, go to wrap text, in front of text. Then I'm gonna go over here, press one and press enter. Then using my arrow key, I'm just gonna move that down. And then back across here, I'm going to type in email, select this one, insert, change the color, change the wrapping, and then change the size, press enter. Once it's selected, just deselect it, then reselect it. Now I can't move it, so I need to go back over to selection pane and just check that's the right one. Select that one and use my arrow key to move it down. And then I can move it with my cursor, but you have to make sure that when you hover over it, it turns to a cross, otherwise you won't be able to move it. Now I'm going to zoom in, but this does 
have its issues because as I zoom in and I make adjustments, often it will jump back up to the top of the page, which is really annoying. So just bear with me. So I'm going to now move this one down so it's level with my website. If you struggle to move it because it's clunky, we just jump to the top of the page. Just click on it as you move it. Hold down your Alter Option key and you can see it smooths out that motion so you can put it exactly where you want it. So I'm going to put it there. This one, again, select Begin to Move It. Hold down your Alter Option key and then move it to where you are. Now I'm trying to move it into the middle of this S. I'm not too worried about the alignment with the top one above or below because we can adjust that in a second. And then again with email, begin to move it, hold down that Alter Option key. Now, if you hold down your Command or Control key and select them all, we can go to Graphics Format, and go to Align and then Align to Center, and then Group and select Group. And now we can select this group and we can move it as close or as far away as we want to to suit our preference. Once I'm happy, hold down the command or control key, select this box, go to group and select group. So once you've made all of those adjustments and inserted the text, the next is the graphics. Go to insert, shapes, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and we're going to select this shape here. Click and drag out this shape. These little yellow boxes allow you to make certain adjustments. Again, this is all a personal preference. You can make these waves more pronounced. I'm just going to turn this around and make it the height of our page. There we go. So again, when you insert a shape, it has a borderline around it. So make sure you're on shape format. Go to shape outline and select no outline. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to go to shape fill. I'm going to go down the bottom here to select this color, but then I'm also going to click on the drop down and go to gradient. And here you can select a number of gradients. Now this is the quick and easy way to do it. So if I select this gradient here, you can see we've got this faint gradient that runs along this line. Now if you want to be a little bit more advanced with this, select it. Then you can go over to the format pane, which is this icon here, and it will bring up this format shape icon. Let's just close these down. It's called format shape. If you go into this icon here, go to fill and go to the gradients, you can see our gradients at the bottom here and you can make all the adjustments you need to here. So let's say I wanted to get rid of one of these colors, so select it and click on minus. And then if I wanted to make this color a bit brighter, select it, go to color, and then select on the lighter blue. And then if I want to change the direction, I can use this icon here and change the direction. Completely up to you. But you can see how you can make this a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. And you can also move these to adjust that gradient as well. And move this darker gradient too. So that's all just very much a personal preference. So once you're happy, and then going to copy and paste this by selecting it, holding down the Alt or Option key, clicking and dragging, and then deselect them both, reselect one, and then click and drag out another one. So with this one here, I'm going to change my gradient to yellow. So I'm going to select this icon here, select the color, and I'm going to select a darker color at the bottom, select this color, and then I'm going to select a lighter yellow. Now if you can't find these colors, select color and go down to more colors and you've got this color wheel and you can move this little icon any way you like and you can move this darken and brighten slider any way you like too. Again a personal preference and I'm going to move this one over and then I'm going to move this one on top and again you can move it any way you like, you don't have to conform, you can move it up to the top, you can move it equal you can make the line thinner or thicker, it's completely up to you. So I'm going to move it to about there. Once I've got all of my graphics in place, I'm going to group them all together again. So I'm going to go back to my selection pane up here, and you can see it's called Wave. So I'm going to select the top one, hold down my Command or Control key and select them all. Then go to Group and select Group. So now the graphics are all one group, I can move them around together. 
but also I'm now going to copy and paste it so again select it hold down the alter option key click and drag and then at the top here I'm just going to deselect you can see they're both selected at the moment just going to deselect them again just reselect this one then at the top here we've got this rotation icon so I'm going to rotate it I'm going to grab this icon at the side and I'm going to invert it and then this will allow me to yet again rotate this and use it at the top here and you can see it's in front of this graphic so I'm going to make sure that's selected go to send backwards click on the drop down and select center back and you can see it sends it behind and then you have the flexibility to move this around and place it wherever you like once you're happy we're finally going to put in a background graphic and where I found mine was on the internet and this is really quick and easy but it does make a difference so this is a website called Pixabay and this has lots of free images that you can use so at the top here all I typed in was wave lines and in all images I selected illustrations and then if you scroll down don't use the top ones they're not free they're sponsored just go down you can scroll down and you can see there's lots of different line patterns and what you're looking for is something like this or alternatively you can use anything you like because I'll show you how to change it in Word. So I'm now on page four and I found this one here. So select it, go to download. I've selected this one here which is 1.3 megabytes and click download. Go back to Word, go to insert, pictures, picture from file. Then I've got my image at the top here click on it, click insert. Once it's inserted go to wrap text and select behind text and then simply stretch it out across your page and then we can use these corrections at the top here. So the first one is transparency and I'm going to select this one here. Then I'm going to go to color and select this saturation at zero so it turns it black and white and then you can make any other adjustments you want. You've got some artistic effects here if you want and you've also got some corrections here which you can sharpen it or you can change it to slightly brighter. It's completely up to you. Then you can go back to transparency and you can make it really faint if you want to. It's completely up to you. So once you're finished you can save it. So you can go to file, you can go to save as, you can save it as a Word document or click on the drop down there's PDF at the bottom so if you can't see it, it says PDF at the bottom and then save it to wherever you like and then don't forget to change the name so I'm going to save mine to my desktop and I'm going to call this cover page waves and then I'm going to save this as a word document now if this appeals to you but you can't be bothered to do all of this there is a link in the description below which shows you where you can download this so I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.